Ladies and gentlemen, it's Saturday Night Vlog with your host, Franklin F.M. McKinnis. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Saturday Night Vlog. I tend to start off with some Funko news, and I am going to this time. I almost decided not to do Funko news, but I, I just felt like the show wouldn't feel complete without it. So forgive me if some of the news you're about to hear, you've, you've already seen that these uh, products are up and coming. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go in and share them just in, for people that may have missed these updates. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I've been looking at these for a while. These Some of these images have been online for a while. The Conan and Red Sonya. Actually, I think I saw Red Sonya first. But uh, the ones that really catch my eye now, the fact that they have three PX exclusives. So they have two Conan that are PX exclusives and then one Red Sonya that's a PX exclusive. So you got the blood splattered Conan, blood splattered Red Sonya. Then you got Conan the Barbarian with that like war paint on. The PX previews exclusives are the ones that I really want. And if you're not familiar with those, these are the ones that you um, can find in comic book shops. And if your comic book shop doesn't carry them, you can ask them to order them. They should be able to. Sometimes you also find PX previews exclusives and I mean, just collectible shops. And uh, from time to time, I have seen them in FYE and some other stores as well. But normally you wouldn't find them in stores like Hot Topic and Walmart and Wal Walgreens, those type of stores but uh yeah if you're interested definitely be on the lookout for these you notice that i have a question mark here behind the december release i i think i've finally realized that funko what they basically do is if they don't have an exact date for a product i think they just put december and that seems to be what's going on because originally elvira was listed as december and obviously elvira the elvira pop has already been available it's been out for a couple weeks now so yeah, I really think December is like a placeholder. So don't be surprised if you see these pops here earlier. Moving right along, a, a series that I really need to go back and watch some again. Cowboy Bebop is definitely one of my favorite anime series of all time. They also had at least one movie. I don't know if they did more than one, but they had a movie that was really excellent too. It has... Just a great soundtrack, a lot of jazz music, but different styles mixed in. And uh, it's, it's really a great marriage between that, that jazz music and the beautiful animation and the action. It's, it's a really good series. So you see they have all the major characters here, Spike, Jet, Faye, and Ed. Uh, that, that character I just kind of put up with is <laughs> definitely a weird character. But um, the other characters, though, I really do like them. They're a great team, really good series if you've never followed it and i think the pop figures look pretty on point i probably would get spike jet and faye ed nah nah I'm, I'm good on ed another series i did watch a couple of episodes of the first season of the blacklist and i just really didn't get into it but i really do like red reddington i like that character um james spader is just a great actor and the design of this pop figure is so on point. Like when I saw this, it made me smile right away. And I was like, they really nailed that design for that character. So I could, have, even though I don't follow the series, I only saw a couple of episodes, I could see myself picking up the Red Reddington pop. Now, Bill and Ted, this might sound crazy, but honestly, I've only ever seen the second movie. I saw Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I never saw Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I only saw, I think, the last few minutes of it. So, but but Bogus Journey, I don't know how some people feel about it compared to the original, but it was pretty funny to me, especially Christopher Lloyd as the, um, the Grim Reaper. I think he played the Grim Reaper in that. So, the pop figures, I don't think I really need them. I'm not that big a fan of the characters. And I heard at one point, just a couple of years ago, they were thinking still about doing a sequel, which... With the age of the actors, I would hope not, and I really don't think it needs to be rebooted, so I, I think they just need to leave that alone. And then you also see here, flashing back to the 80s as well, they have Q-Bert, which um, 
I played that game a little bit. I think a Super Nintendo version of it wasn't really crazy about it, but you know, it's cool that they're giving some throwback characters and I hope to see some more throwback characters coming up as well. Ash versus Evil Dead. Um, I haven't seen that series at all. I did see the movies, um, at least the second Evil Dead movie and then Army of Darkness. I did see those. I really did enjoy them. And I also had a uh, comic, which I recently passed along to a YouTube friend, but it was a pretty good comic. It was um, Ash versus the Marvel Zombies, which was excellent. And I I think that's the one I passed along because I know there was Ash versus the Marvel Zombies. I'm pretty sure that's the one I passed along. And then I used to have one as well that was Ash versus Freddy versus Jason which was pretty cool as well. So I do like the character Ash and that pop figure I think it looks better than the Ash that is out already so I could see myself picking that up but these other characters I, I don't know them because I don't follow the series and I really don't know if I would follow the series. There's just there's too much great television out there right now it's impossible to keep up with everything so you do have to kind of pick and choose only so many hours in a day. And speaking of a series I don't know nothing about, I know even less about Gilmore Girls. I've heard the name, I have no idea what it's about, but there you go. If you're a fan of Gilmore Girls, they do have some characters on the way. Shopkins. I don't know how you all feel about Shopkins, but I felt like Shopkins just sprung up out of nowhere. And it was like suddenly, it seemed like it was in almost every store. Like I know there's a lot of it in Walmart. Target like the department stores at least I see a lot of Shopkins going on and I just I was like where in the world did all this come from it, it felt like overnight Shopkins was just everywhere and uh, they're I guess they're interesting collectibles I wouldn't collect any of it myself I mean honestly when I look at Shopkins I just get hungry because most of it is food but I do think they have some other things as well so the the pop figures here though they do have a unique design going on with them, which I guess they would have to since they are, you know, mainly foods here. And I'm sure they'll expand on the line and have more than just foods because, like I said, I've seen some other items as well. But I think they're cute. And if you're in a Shopkins, I don't see why you wouldn't be interested in these. Like I said, they're cute enough. Mummy Batman. <laughs> Sometimes I try to defend... Uh, the, the use of Batman but there are times when I'm just like what what are they thinking and this is one of those times when I just I just don't care I don't, I don't see any use to have mummy mummy Batman in my collection so if you're interested it is a Barnes and Noble exclusive I don't know when it would be out I would assume that it's be out pretty soon if it's not already out because it seems like they're kind of releasing that because it's Halloween time so yeah it, if you are interested in that be on the lookout for it because it might be out there already Monster High, this is another, um, just another license that seems to be everywhere. Like, when I'm going out hunting, especially if I go to department stores like Walmart, and, um, you know, I'm passing by the aisle where it's, you know, basically the girls' toys, you know, quote, quote, girl toys. Um, Monster High, there's a lot of products out there. I've seen some stores where it seems like Monster High takes up like a quarter of the total aisle space. There's a lot of it out there, so I'm kind of surprised to see that they're doing Funko products as well, but I guess it's popular enough to where they feel like it will be successful. So you see that they have the main line there, the main pops, there are five of them, then they got the at least three rock candy figures, there may be more, but that's what I was able to find, at least three rock candy figures, and then they do have a Walmart exclusive Skeletta, I think that's how you say that name, and you see that she has the Day of the Dead look going on, so... They, I think they are great designs. They do really catch the eye, but I don't know anything about that series. Definitely not for me, but, you know, if you really are a fan of Monster High, I think these are pretty very, you know, detailed figures. They do look good. Batman, the animated series, definitely holds a special place in my nerdy heart. Um, you know, I grew up watching that series. Uh, I say grew, grew up watching it, but really it's because it wasn't, it didn't run, like, for a super long time because Warner Brothers decided to shift the focus instead of just having Batman and just Superman with their own series they ended up doing the Justice League and then Justice League Unlimited and they just kept going from there but uh 
Yeah, I think Batman had maybe three seasons that were really geared towards both adults and young people. I, I felt like young people and um, you know adults could enjoy the series. And then they did sort of a soft reboot, even though they called it like the fourth season, but they really did gear it more towards younger kids. And that's pretty much when I lost interest in it because uh, I can't remember what my age was at the time. I was definitely at least a teenager and I just, I really wasn't into it once they had that shift to a younger audience. But the first three seasons at least were pretty phenomenal and I'm um, definitely glad to see these pop figures although I'm not crazy about all of the designs but I mean Harley that's definitely a must even though I do feel that she's a little bit similar to the Harleys that are already out there but they did slim her up to kind of make her more fitting to her original looks I, I see they did that I think that Poison Ivy is pretty good and it's about time you know that there's another Poison Ivy pop so that's definitely on point and then Batman and Robin are a maybe for me. Um, I know it seems like Batman would be a definite since I'm such a fan of the series, but honestly, I don't know. His his design, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on it. I think it's because the shape of his head just looks weird to me. It's something about the shape of his head, so I don't know. And the Joker, too, I feel like I would need to see it up close before I decide to pick it up. But I think I could see myself picking up Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy at least. Then the X-Men, which is way overdue. I'm glad that um, some of this licensing nonsense, you know, um, company, the companies are kind of getting past and working together a little bit more. Because I do feel like uh, Marvel's issues with Fox is why we haven't seen a whole lot of X-Men. But like I said, I'm really glad that they are on the way now. Quicksilver, I said this in a recent video. I, I still feel like Quicksilver's design is maybe a t little bit too plain. I actually would rather see a movie version of Quicksilver. I think a lot of people would. So the comic version I'm not so interested in. I do like Psylocke. Um, definitely like her design. I like Archangel as well, although I, I really would need to see those colors in person. And I've seen some customs, some amazing customs of Archangel. Um, but the wings on them sometimes are just so huge. Like they're beyond what a pop could really be to fit inside of a box. So I understand why they're doing the wings in a shorter way here. But like I said, I, I got to see those colors on Archangel in person before I decide whether or not to pick that one up. And I still want to see more X-Men characters. Uh, Gambit, I mean, Gambit, that's that's a license to print money. If they do Gambit and they do him properly, you know, get the cars in it in one hand, get his staff in the other hand, that's a license to print money. Rogue also would be great. In fact, you know, Gambit and Rogue releasing together would be huge, of course, because they had a relationship. That'd be amazing. And then Nightcrawler as well. Although I do think Nightcrawler might be on the way. I'm not 100% sure on that. But definitely Nightcrawler is one I would pick up as well. Now along with the pop figures. And those aren't all the pop figures on the way. There are some others as well. They also have some Dorbs on the way here. And um, um I don't know. I, these Dorbs. Honestly. <laughs> I would probably say I would wait to find these marked down and then maybe I'd pick them up. I don't see myself picking these up right away. If I were to pick up one right away, it might be Sabretooth. I, I kind of like the Sabretooth one. But these other ones, I might wait till they um, hit a certain bin, you know, and then I might go for them. So that's my rapid fire version of... <laughs> Funko news even though it's still a little bit long here but um I really want to give props to Fact Toner. Fact Toner does a great job with Funko news and he's a lot more concise than I am because I, I really like to give my opinions but he'll just quickly give you that news and he may say a little bit about what he likes and doesn't like but um yeah he, he's very concise with it so if you want some quick Funko news make sure that you check out Fact Toner's channel and if you are into Funko, you really should be subscribed to his channel by now. So I will try to remember to link him down below. Like I said, just check him out. He does a great job with Funko News. And if you have any Funko News to share yourself, drop it down in the comments. If you know of anything else that's on the way out, please let the community know. We'd definitely appreciate that. got a box here and uh, I'll be honest I really don't know what this is or exactly who it's from the last name looks kind of familiar but I, I noticed about 
one thing about being a YouTuber that's kind of an interesting, I don't know if I call it a problem, but I mean, it's an interesting little issue, I guess, is that there are a lot of YouTubers that don't use their real name. So um, sometimes when I get packages, I really don't know exactly who is coming from. And I'm, I'm trying to get better about remembering uh, people's real names, you know, to help me out with that. But uh, like I said, this one, the last name looks kind of familiar, but at the same time, I may have just known somebody before with this last name. So I'm not exactly sure what this is. I am accept and, like expecting several different packages from several different people, but the address doesn't look familiar. So I'll just see what this is all about. Okay, and thankfully, <laughs> there is a note in here. So let me see what's going on here. Um. Okay, okay. So yeah, I knew that last name looked familiar. She just uh, abbreviated her first name. So it says, Dear Franklin, thank you so much for trading with me. I hope you enjoy your Nora Harley, Harley Quinn. That is a spoiler there, but she actually mentioned it in her video, so that's fine. It says, I also want to thank you for subscribing to me and your continued support. Have an amazing day. And this is Nicole, a.k.a. Quackbox. So, yeah, I've been collecting the DC little bombshell figures. And I actually have, with this one, I now have all the ones that I want. And she packed this really well, a lot of peanuts. So let me <laughs> dump these into another box over here. Oh, well, I think I just dumped the figure, too. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So she actually sent it in the can as well. Really wrapped it up nicely. So, yeah, like I said, this is going to complete the ones that I want. And actually, let me go ahead and point this out to you. The only ones that I didn't get, I really wasn't concerned about having. Although, if I decide later on that I really want to be a completionist, then I will go back for them to find them. I, d I didn't get Mira. Um... Although I do think that character, I've seen that character, the way that she's going to look in the Justice League movie. Really nice costume design. Um, Hulk Girl. Although, I don't know, maybe I should have gotten a Hulk Girl. But I'm not like a big fan of the character, so maybe that's why I didn't worry about her. But uh, I think I have all of the rest of these. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. So it's just Mira and Hulk Girl that I don't have. And like I said, if I decide to be a completionist, then I will go in and get those as well. So let me go ahead and get this Harley Quinn out here. This was basically a rare figure. And that's why, as a matter of fact, if you see here, there's the colored version. And then you can tell there that's another Harley Quinn. So that's the one that this is. And it is the Nor version. So, yep, there she goes. Very cute figure. I like the winking eye there. And I, I just like this color scheme. The, um, basically grayscale figure with the highlights of red and this is kind of a dark red too I think it just looks great so let me actually go ahead and sit her along with the rest of the bombshell figures that I have so my organization over here might look just a little bit off <laughs> And the reason why mainly is because I did move around a lot of figures recently to kind of set up my horror background for where I mainly film. But uh, this top area here, this is kind of a DC slash Harley Quinn overflow area. <laughs> you see there is a lot of Harley Quinn going on over here, but this is still mainly where I have most of my Harley Quinn stuff over in this corner here. You see I have all of the main pop figures down there. And that poster, which I'm still a big fan of, of course. Yeah, so getting back over here to the bombshells. Like I said, you see I had them going on here. Got Flash, Black Canary, uh, Katana, Batwoman. Got both of the Wonder Woman figures, the regular one and then that Nora version. Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and then both of the Harley Quinns. And I actually got this mini Harley Quinn sitting right above the full-size bombshell. And I do like that, even though they're colored the same way for the most part, the designs are a little bit different from each other. So that's pretty cool. And you got one there with the revolver, one with the hammer. So yeah, very happy to have those figures. And like I said, if I end up being a completionist, then I will get the last two. But I'm really happy with these right now. 
So again, big thank you to Quack Box, uh, of Quack Box Unboxings. If you're not familiar with her channel, I will make sure that I link it down below so you can go check her out, you know, subscribe to her. She does a lot of unboxings, of course, as the title suggests, you know, the, the name of her channel suggests. So, uh, yeah, make sure that you do check her out and show some support. Please subscribe as well. So this is another Pops for Pets update. By this point, I hope everybody's familiar with what Pops for Pets is about. You know, and just to sum it up, it's basically about trying to help animals that are in need, whether they have medical needs or they're just in danger of going to the pound and being stuck there for a while. And of course, if they're not adopted from the pound, we know what happens. So with Pops for Pets, I have linked up with Dog on Shelter Intervention of Latta, South Carolina, and they do rescue pets from not just locally, but from really around the country. They are able to do that to help reach out and find animals that need help and to get them with owners from around the country. So it's not just a local thing here. This is really helping animals and potential owners, you know, from different places. So it's a very good cause that I'm trying to help with here. And like I said, I've, like I've been saying, it's a personal cause to me because I do have a rescue animal. I have a dog, Radcliffe. That's a rescue animal. So for the sake of time, I am going to move through this kind of quickly. And there really hasn't been much change since my last update. I am hoping, though, that there will be some change, that more people will contribute right before the deadline, before we actually have the drawing. So just for the sake of time, I'm not going to read down this list. I do want to point out, though, that I had somebody that contributed anonymously. And at first, I thought it was a donation. That was my mistake. He did correct me, though, and point out that he actually intended it to be raffle entries. So down there at the bottom, you see it says anonymous. And he does have five entries in. And then for anybody else that has contributed to the raffle, just do me a favor. Check here. Make sure that your name is included. And if you see any issues, please reach out to me and let me know. And I will make sure that I correct that. I'm doing my best to keep track of everything. And uh, it really helps me that when people um, send me their raffle entries via PayPal, that you do make sure that you specify exactly what the money is for, whether it's raffle entries or donations. And do remember that each raffle entry is $3 and you can enter as many times as you want to. So the same thing here for the donations, please check if you if you donated money, check and make sure that I got your correct amount here. I do want to point out that um, I did have one addition here, Gigi of Gigi's Geek Zone. She basically uh, she provided the Powerpuff Girls set and then I took that set and I auctioned it off. I was hoping to get more bids on it, but. I don't know, maybe it's because Funko Auctions on Facebook because there are so many hardcore collectors. I guess it's just maybe that people that really wanted that set did actually go out and get it already. So I only had one person to um, actually bid on it. So basically the money that was spent on the set, because I think they were 15 each, we managed to get that money back at least. And um, I may actually round up Gigi's amount though, you know, just because, I mean, she was so nice to contribute to that. As a matter of fact... I just know when it comes down to the total, the, the very end total, I am going to work it out to round it up some. And I may even give up some more figures from my collection to get the number up to a nice round number. So uh, again, big shout out to Gigi though for providing those figures. I just wish that, um, and, and you know, this was kind of out of my hands. I, I just wish the bidding had been, you know, more <laughs> interesting basically. And we got it up some more there. So the current total right now sits at $284. That's where we are right now with our total, $284. Very close to $300, and I hope that the final, to final total can be well above $300 because that sounds like a decent amount, but like I've been saying, it is pretty expensive to take care of these animals, especially when they have medical costs. It can be expensive to take care of them until we do find owners for them. So yeah, I really want to keep that moving. In the last Pops for Pets update, I said that there were two runner-up prizes. There's actually going to be three. So along with the grand prize, that means that people who are entered into the raffle 
actually have four chances to win a prize. So obviously there's the grand prize, which you saw on the screen, the Deadpool figure set, the Mercs for Money set. And then also there is a runner up prize from Anthony Nelson. I'll link his video down again. You can check that out to see what one of the runner up prizes will be. I'm not going to say it. Make sure you check out his video and do what he asks of you to find out about that prize. And you do have to follow what he asks of you to actually be eligible for that particular prize. And then also, Sherry Stover, good friend Sherry Stover, very, very loyal subscriber and really more than subscriber. I really do consider her a friend, great person. She has uh, sent a prize this way as well. I actually got the box right here, which I am going to get into in just a second here. And then Lisa Reviews, another YouTuber, she has offered up a prize as well, which I'll talk some more about in a moment here. But actually, let, let me go ahead and get to what Sherry just sent. I'm going to go ahead and get this box opened up. And she actually used a collector core. She used the collector core box to send this. I haven't looked inside of it yet. There is one item I know that she's supposed to be sending my way. I'm not sure if that's in here or not. But I know that she did do some, or basically she uh, has provided a prize. I'm not going to say any more about it. I want you to actually see it. Okay, so... So yeah, I do see that she sent the item that is for me as part of a trade that we did. But I want to go ahead and show you what she's offering as a prize here. So if you know anything about my channel, you've been watching it, following it, then you know that Sherry Stover does some custom pop work. So the first custom that she's providing as part of the runner-up prize here is a Red Hulk. Okay, so she actually created Red Hulk. And I'm not going to open the figure up because I, I just I don't really feel right about that since this is a prize it, but I think you can see it pretty well here through the packaging or through the box I should say yeah really great looking I really like the way that she did the eyes there okay so custom Red Hulk by Sherry and then she also did She-Hulk as well so custom red She-Hulk and I definitely like the black and silver outfit Okay, and Hulk there has, I don't know if you can see that or not, might not be able to see it with the glare, but he has black shorts on. Okay, so. And then, I was kind of wondering what she meant. She said that she was going to provide two and a half <laughs> customs, that's what she said it. And what she meant is that along with these two, she also did a Red Hulk keychain or a pocket pop. Okay. So, yeah, very cool there really great paint jobs so these the pocket pop and these two pops together all together this is one of the runner-up prizes I think these really look great and in fact when she showed me the picture I was like right away I'm jealous because you know one winner is going to get these one one of the runner-ups is going to get these so again there's the grand the grand prize which is the Mercs for Money set and then from there I'll do the drawing you know we'll have the runner-ups and uh, the first runner-up gets first choice and, you know, so on. We'll, we'll do it that way, basically. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be one of the runner-up prizes. Like I said, check down in the description for Anthony Nelson's video to see what one of the other runner-up prizes is. And I will go ahead and talk about the other runner-up prize as well. So, as I said before... Lisa Reviews, who is a YouTuber, she hasn't been posting as much lately. Um, I'm hoping that she will, you know, get back into it. But uh, we know sometimes people just need a break from it. But anyways, uh, she does custom work as well. But she does these uh, these very unique looking dragon style figures. And she does them in a lot of variations. So you see that she can actually take them and do them in a comic book style. So you see the Captain America figure there. You got Harley Quinn and Joker there. And then also really like that Cthulhu piece as well. So, and, and she also, uh, she's recently posted this up that she did this Halloween artwork there, um, sort of in the middle, that she spent, I think, 13 hours on. And it's kind of funny that it took 13 hours. But yeah, Twisted and Troublesome Friends, you can check out more of her work on Facebook. I believe she has an Etsy page as well. But I think it's probably easiest to just go to Facebook and check out her work and get a good look at it. So, she is offering up custom work as well. Now she did point out that she does, um, she's in the UK, but she does ship internationally and she has a lot of orders in that she has to work on. 
So if you get this runner up prize, if that's what you end up choosing or that's what you end up with, you will have to be a little bit patient with her. She will work with you though. And um, I think she said at least by January, she will get some custom work to you as a runner up prize. So very kind of Lisa to offer that up. We again definitely appreciate it. I appreciate all you know appreciate everybody that donated um, figures or their own custom work to this cause. It's just great community. That's all I can say. A really great community helping with this cause. So again, as a reminder, please help to continue to spread the word and get in your raffle entries. They are three dollars each to my PayPal account, and you see my PayPal address there. Simply my name, Franklin McKinnis at Yahoo.com. And um, you know, like I said, I'm being transparent here. I'm letting you see exactly how much money is being raised, and this will all go towards the cause. And of course, we are accepting donations as well. Still. Another reminder here, originally the drawing was going to actually be this weekend, but due to Hurricane Matthew, because I wasn't able to promote the way that I really wanted to, it has been moved to November 2nd. So you still got a little time to get in raffle entries and donations if you haven't done so, you know, so I, like I said, I'm giving you that opportunity and please help to spread the word as well. Now, I will have to point this out that I basically have backed off on promoting it on Facebook just because, and I, I had a feeling that this would happen. I feel like anytime somebody tries to do something positive, there are going to be some negative elements that push back against it. And I've seen that a little bit, so I've kind of backed away from promoting this on Facebook. But, you know, this is my channel here, my YouTube channel, so I'm still promoting it this way. And I really do appreciate anybody else that promotes, you know, however you can as well. It's definitely appreciated. Like I always say, win or lose, remember that this is for a good cause. You know, we're going to help a lot of cats and a lot of dogs find good homes. And that's really what it all comes down to. And you can still, you know, go to uh, Facebook and check out Dog on Shelter Intervention to see what they're all about. And you'll see they do a lot of good work. They are constantly rescuing animals and they, they just need that support, though, because they're not getting paid to do what they do. You know, they are giving up a lot of their time, a lot of their energy towards this cause. So they need that support. They really do. And I appreciate it, everybody that has supported the cause thus far. And let's just continue to keep it moving because there is still time to, you know, contribute as much as we can to the cause. I didn't forget people, I know some of you are probably thinking that I forgot to share what Sherry Stover sent to me personally as part of a trade that we, we did. I did not forget though, I just wanted to go ahead and make sure I gave you the full Pops for Pets update first. So the item that she sent my way, and I'm really surprised that she was willing to send this to me, and, and I'm really excited to have this now, is we got the Daryl Dixon Limited Chase Dorbs. And of course what makes this a chase is that it is blood splattered which is kind of crazy to see him smiling with this blood splattered all over him. Okay, and of course he's got his little crossbow there. So really cool to have a Chase Dorbs. This is the first Chase Dorbs that I've ever owned. I've never actually come across one in a store. And uh, as far as Chase figures go, I really don't have that many. I have uh, this one now. Still got my Green Goblin Chases, which is probably still one of my favorite pops. Um, definitely my top three favorite pops. And uh, let me see what else. Uh, that might be it because I'm, I'm giving up uh, two of my Chase figures. I'm giving up the Metallic Madcap and the Terror Chase, you know, for Pops for Pets. So, yeah, not, not a lot of Chase figures going on around my way. I'm really trying to think if I do have another one, but, you know, I'm kind of looking around at my collection. But, yeah, I think that's it. So, I haven't had much luck with uh, Chase figures. You know, maybe I'll come across some more in the future. It's really not something I stress over too much, but it would be nice to have a couple more in my collection eventually. So I'm really am happy to have this one. It's very kind of Sherry to send this my way because uh, I actually haven't checked the value on it, but I I would assume that the value is above what I sent her way. And uh, in case you're curious, the two figures I sent her way, um, she wanted Michael Myers. I, I ran across Michael Myers at Player's Choice in North Myrtle Beach. And um, and then she also wanted, I had an extra 
I'm trying to remember which. I know it was one of the hot topic horror figures. I'm trying to remember if it was Jason or no. I don't think it was Jason because I would have recognized that. I think it was Beetlejuice. Yeah, I think she got Beetlejuice and Michael Myers. So yeah, she wanted some more horror added into her collection. Yeah, so this is what she sent me in trade, well, part of the trade, and yeah, I really appreciate this. Very cool to have this, and great timing as well, of course, because Walking Dead is returning this weekend, and yeah, I'm very pumped about that. I also picked up, uh, I shared this in a recent video, that Walker back there, even though it was out of box, that's the first time I've ever bought a pop that was out of box. I didn't really care. I just wanted to go ahead and have that as part of my horror background and kind of to celebrate the return of the Walking Dead. Now something else I know that you all are looking for of course is that I have my giveaway and uh, I didn't forget about that either so yeah it is time for the drawing. Just in case anybody doesn't remember what the prizes are for this giveaway this Walking Dead slash Halloween giveaway I am gonna of course share those with you again quickly just as a reminder so the first item in the giveaway is this well walker pop figure which is from season two of the series great detailing on it just as a reminder I feel like I need to point this out each time the box is not in perfect condition it does have kind of a bent corner here and uh, I think it's like just a little bit of tearing there very slight though you can barely even see it but overall you know it's not too bad but I just feel like I should point that out but I think the pop itself absolutely looks great. This is really one of the coolest walkers in my opinion. Okay, so that's part of the giveaway. Then we also have, also a reference to season two, injured Daryl Dixon okay, with the arrow stuck through his side and then he has that necklace around there with the ears on it. And I don't know why, I still cannot remember um, the episode where he looked this way, where he was injured like that. I don't know, it's probably just because it's been so long since season two and I only watched it one time so I really can't remember all of it that well but yeah this is a pop figure that I knew uh, a lot of people were looking for so that's why I chose it for the giveaway and I've had this in my mind to actually use this since early this year. Okay so got those two and then since this does kind of sort of fit along with the Halloween theme and I did have an extra one. Okay, I'm going to actually include the Scarecrow Dorbs as well, which I really do like this Dorbs and kind of biased just because I'm a big, friend, big fan of the character Scarecrow. So yeah, this will be part of the giveaway as well. And then who knows, I may toss in one or two other little items into the box as well. I mean, we'll, we'll see there. We'll see with the winner. So yeah, these are the main items that one person is about to win. And uh, like I always say with giveaways, if you don't win, be a good sport about it. You know, you might get a chance another time. And uh, I hope that everybody met the requirements. If, if you feel that you're in the giveaway, you should basically know what you were supposed to do. So that's what I'm going off of. I'm going to look back at that list of people that responded about who they felt should be killed in the series. Not who they think is going to be killed. Not a guessing game, but who you feel should be killed that's what this is based off of so that's what I'm looking back at just that one video where you're supposed to put your response gonna get those names together and let's go ahead and get to that drawing here is the random name picker all set up and ready to go before I actually spin the wheel here let me go ahead and name everybody that is entered into this giveaway and do remember that to be entered you did have to name a specific character that you want to see killed I was flexible with just one individual that said they like to see multiple characters killed and I was flexible just because I know that person is a loyal subscriber and they do comment on a regular basis which I definitely appreciate. So running through the list of names here we have Pop Hunter K1, Wacky Weirdo, Gigi of Gigi's Geek Zone, Michael Crowthers or just Michael C there, Funk Off, Who's Got Pops, that's Max Hedron of Who's Got Pops, Rogan Bite, Lilith Morning. Clayton Whitehurst, Ethan Finds Out, Mitchell Jensen, and W.I. Clark. So, you know how this goes, folks. Cross your fingers, cross your toes, and let's get to it. Any. Maybe. Miney. 
GG, it was close. That's, that's a heartbreaker there for you, I know, but that's very close. But our winner is Michael Crowthers. So, um, yeah, Michael, uh, make sure that you do contact me, and uh, you have till Tuesday, at least by Tuesday. I hope you watch this video. You contact me, and then um, we'll you know set things up to get the pops out to you, the pops in the dwarves, to get that all out to you, and. Uh, you know, thank you for everybody that entered into this giveaway. I really do appreciate that. And if you didn't win, if you haven't won one of my giveaways before, just keep supporting the channel. Keep checking out for giveaways. As I've said before, I'm not going to do them necessarily monthly, but just do be on the lookout for when they do arise. And uh, yeah, support the channel. Hopefully, uh, and I really think that I'm familiar with most of the people that did enter this giveaway, and I know you are a true supporters. So. Yeah, just just continue to be supportive, and um, you know I'll keep the giveaways coming from time to time. Now that I've done the drawing, I do want to share my thoughts about what I would like to see happen. Um, you know, as far as which character will be killed off, and I know this isn't going to happen, but it's, it's still basically what I would like to see. So, like I said, I was flexible. I did include one person into the giveaway who said they'd like to see multiple characters killed. I'm actually in agreement with that. Now, I don't want to see Rick or Carl killed off because the producers have said, and I really agree with this, that The Walking Dead, when it comes down to it, it is Rick's story. It doesn't matter how many other characters they bring into it, it is the story of Rick Grimes. So, uh, yeah, I think the series should end with him, although I will say that uh, when they kill off Rick Grimes, I think there should be maybe like an epilogue to it where we get to see Carl step up as a leader. I would really like to see that. I think there needs to be sort of an epilogue with The Walking Dead because we really have watched Carl, that character, grow up, you know, and the actor grow up on this series. So I really think that's important. But, yeah, I think if Rick is killed off, then that should pretty much be the end of the main series. Now, as far as the other characters are concerned, I definitely don't want to see Michonne go and... You know, Rick and Michonne, and I hope that anybody's watching this is completely caught up on the series, but they have just sparked up a relationship that's, it's, in a way, it's been a long time coming, but at the same time, it was kind of surprising to see as well. So, uh, I definitely don't think that that should be, me you know, messed with in any way. And, um, everybody loves Daryl. I, I love the character too, but honestly, I feel like they're not getting good use out of the character they really need to step it up and give him more interesting storylines and I've heard like some different rumors about things that they want to do with the character I'm, I'm just it really doesn't matter to me as long as they do something interesting with them so I think if he were to be killed it'd be kind of a disappointment just because they haven't done enough with him now these are two of my favorite pops because Morgan was the very first pop figure I bought and Carol, I actually ended up buying Carol online. And then, of course, like it usually goes right after I bought her, I saw her in stores. But we know that those two are not in that uh, lineup of who may be killed. They're both safe right now. And I'm actually glad they're together and working together now. So that's great to see. But getting back to the lineup of who could uh, actually die, I actually do own the pop of the character that I feel should die. And that is Abraham. And the reason why is because I believe in karma 
and the way that Abraham did Rosita was just cold and in some ways he's a positive character a lot of ways he's been a negative character so I really would not miss Abraham that much I mean a, a little bit I would but I think I'd get over that quickly I don't think it would bother me as much as maybe like Tyrese you know dying but uh Tyrese pretty much I, I think he was at the point where he wanted to die uh, it, it just seemed that way it really felt that way like he had kind of given up so uh Abraham I think I'd miss him maybe just a little but overall I think he is that character that needs to go and if you look back at that scene he really looked uh, Negan in the eye and just you know Negan took note of that so uh that whole any mini money mo thing we know that's nonsense it's not random he he had somebody in mind he was acting like he was indecisive but I think he really did make up his mind and uh, if you paid attention also we know that Rick and Carl are safe because Negan said if anybody moves take out the boys other eye and feed it to his father so that lets you know that those two are safe and like I said I wouldn't want to see them killed anyway and uh, some of the other characters I just don't think it would have much impact like if Eugene were to die I'd be very disappointed because they hinted at it way too much and uh, I just think that Eugene has started to step up and he needs more of a chance to do that there's another character I forget his name because they really haven't done much of anything with him but he was that uh he was the guy that was out help, helping to find people in fact Daryl worked along with him they were going out looking for people to bring back so I can't remember the guy's name but uh they really haven't done much with him but I, I think it would have no impact at all if he were killed so I mentioned that um I, I basically agree with the idea of multiple characters being killed so what I feel should happen is that Abraham should be killed and then Sasha who has just kind of sparked up this relationship with him and she has lost so much you know she lost her brother Tyrese she lost her um, previous boyfriend Bob who uh, I think I actually have a mini of Bob in here somewhere but uh yeah I think that she should maybe snap and decide to stand up be very defiant and maybe not Negan himself but maybe one of Negan's men decide to take her out as well I, I just think two characters dying would be a very strong impact and uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Glenn is kind of on the chopping block too and I, I honestly feel that let's say that and, and this is something that some people have talked about and I kinda agree with it if they're gonna kill multiple characters I think it should be Abraham and Sasha or maybe Glenn and Maggie that would have some serious impact and I think that Maggie could be on the chopping block just because Negan sees that she does look sick and weak he doesn't know completely what's going on with her but um you know if he felt like she'd be a liability and he killed her then maybe Glenn would be the one that would jump up again and get himself killed I'll just say this though a after this point if they keep Glenn alive he doesn't deserve any more lies basically he he's had nine lies and he's used more than nine lies it's about time for Glenn to go and stop escaping harm because it's getting to the point where it's a little silly that he's always the one that manages to escape these situations and eventually especially in the world of the walking dead everybody's luck runs out so uh yeah that's the way I feel about it I'm really leaning towards Abraham at least and they may keep it to just one character so if it's only one character I'm actually hoping that it is Abraham I think that'll have enough impact and like I said, if Sasha went to that, I'd, I'd actually be okay with that. But we're all about to find out what happens. I hope it's a good episode. I did go back and watch that final scene again. Very entertaining scene. The first time I watched it, I felt it was a little too wordy, like I'm being right now. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, going back and watching it again, it actually is a pretty good scene. It has a little bit of cheesy dialogue to it, but it actually works for the character Negan. It gives him more personality. So uh. Yeah, I can't wait to check out that episode, and I may actually do a response video to it as well. If anybody would be interested in that, to hear my thoughts about the first episode, let me know, and I may do a video on that. But yeah, that's enough uh, for now. As a matter of fact, I am going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, episode of Saturday Night Vlog. I think you've all heard me run, run my mouth enough for this evening, but I definitely appreciate you all checking out the video, and you know, especially for those of you that stuck with me all the way to the end here. I really do appreciate that. 
Do not forget support Pops for Pets. There is still time to do that. Great cause. Please support it. As a matter of fact, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but the people that run um, that run the Dog on Shelter Intervention just uh, yesterday, they had a, a new dog with them, and the dog was, I mean, he, he's, he'd been through some things because of uh, Hurricane Matthew, and he was actually shivering and just, but you could still see that he wanted to be loved. He was kind of warming up to them and they're very caring people like he was getting comfortable with them quickly just in the few minutes that I was standing there talking to them so they really are great people and they're doing a great thing you know rescuing these animals especially the animals that have been affected by the hurricane as well so again it's a great cause please support it at least if you don't want to spend any money at least spread the word please help with that at least because we got to the second to make this happen to help them out as much as possible but again, thank you all for watching and uh, you all take care to next time and just be on the lookout for a lot more videos coming up on my channel. You all have a good weekend.